the cat moved over. There's the fox. Come on, cat. Come on, cat. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 7.20 a.m. and here's Stella. She's hanging out on my towel. I just got out of the shower a little while ago. Good morning, Stella. And last night, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I woke up out of a sound sleep because I heard the sound of a cat vomiting. Right, Stella? And it wasn't like a hacking hairball vomit kind of sound, like the loud sound. It was a very quiet pumping sound. And I don't know, I guess I've trained myself to just react to that sound, even to wake myself up out of a sound sleep. So I uh, jumped out of bed and I didn't realize that Simba and Stella were both sleeping on the bed. Um, so I knew it wasn't them. So I immediately thought it was Boo. But I checked Boo's room and Boo was sleeping on his day sofa. So I was like, okay, it's not Boo, it has to be Splash. So I put the lights on in the living room and Splash was just hanging out there. He was like looking at me. He was sitting on the rug. Then I was like, okay, well, where is it? So I had to look around first and then it looked like he vomited up a hairball with some food on top of it on the play rug and a little bit on one of those grass mats that the cats have. So I had to clean it up and then, you know, when cats vomit, it's usually not just in one place. It, there's usually a little bit somewhere else and sure enough I found that on the other rug. So I had to clean that up. It looks like Boo had a hairball within the past few days and Splash had a hairball within the past few days. So. Um, hopefully there won't be more within the next few days, right Stella? It is 7.52 a.m. and this is what happened last night. So, um, I heard some weird noises outside last night and I heard some raccoons chattering and at one point I thought, I hope they didn't break into the feeder. And look what happened, they broke into the feeder. So let's assess the damages. So they were able to move this heavy paver. They didn't pull it off, they just slid it over and they were able to lift this piece of wood up. Not only that, but look at this. They were able to get the top 
off of this unit and I don't even know what that plastic piece is. See this plastic piece? I don't even know what it is. So this plastic piece is this mechanism on here that you press to open this. So I gotta figure out how to fix this if it can be fixed. So I snapped it back in, it goes like this. However, they did break a piece off on the back. There's a broken piece on the back. And they got into the food, there's a bunch of food there. They didn't need all of it though. So another thing they've been doing is taking these binder clips off the bowl. So I have the bowl attached with these binder clips and this is the second time that I found some binder clips taken off. So I just put a paver directly on top of the feeder and then I'm gonna put the wood on top of this and I'll put another paver. Here's Richard, do you see him? He's been watching me. And I came over here to grab another paver and he was gonna run away but then I was like, hey Richard. And he, he just stood there. I don't wanna scare him. You want some food? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? I'll give you some food, Richard, okay? I'm getting so close, guys. I'm so close. I'm probably six feet away. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard, you hungry? Want some food? His tail's still there. He's not going anywhere. Come here. So here's what's going on now. I replaced the wood with this piece of plywood. This is a two foot by two foot piece of plywood. It's gonna hang over the, the bowl, so it's gonna protect it a little bit from some rain. And I put two pavers on top, so it'll be heavier. So there's the two pavers on top and the paver on top of the actual feeder itself. So hopefully that'll keep everything in place. I'm gonna keep that feeder off because I'm gonna feed the cats just food on plates since I'm home. And um, yeah, so that's what's going on today. So I did not take the middle leg here off the table. I just butted the table up against the wood and there's a little bit of an overlap. So I think for now that's good. So there's quite a large area underneath the table where the cats can eat and stay dry and we'll see how this goes. We're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. Not a heavy storm or anything, but we'll see how it goes. And there's Richard, he's just hanging out. Hey Richard, you want some food? Little Richard. Hey little Richard. It's 8 a.m., I'm putting some food together. And look at this. Look, it's little Richard by the back door with Boo. Boo's not happy. Who's very not happy. What a brave cat Richard is. But he's no fool. He knows Boo's not happy. If that glass was not there, Boo would be in a fight right now. You're okay, Richard. You're okay. The door's shut. Look at that. One of the torties was just on top of the feeder. Checking out the new pavers. I don't know which one it was. So I have a plate of food here. It's some of the homemade cat food, the cooked cat food, which the cats like. And some um, dry cat food, some crunchies. I'm looking at the cats right now, so I'm a little distracted. So there's Richard. And today I feel like this cat's name is Goldie because it almost has like a gold coin on its head. It would be kind of a strange name for a cat that's so dark, but I don't know. Then it would be Ziggy and Goldie. We'll see. We'll see what happens if that sticks or if it doesn't feel right. See the, like the, it's like a gold marking on the head. I'm zoomed in as far as I could go. Is that missing fur? Is that lighter colored fur or is that actually missing fur? I can't really tell in this camera screen. So while I was standing here filming the other cat, Richard came to eat. He's like four feet away from me. This is the closest I've been to any of these cats yet. I don't wanna freak him out or scare him or anything. So I'm just gonna let him eat. I'm gonna go inside. The other cat will probably come, come by.
so this table is a much better size for multiple cats versus the other table. The other table is really only for like one or two cats. Oh, look at this. Look, I backed up about three feet. Hey, Goldie. So that's as zoomed in as I could go. Let's check this out. So the Dollar Tree now has pet bandanas. They might have had them before. I've never seen them there before. So I got this one. It's a small. And what I liked about them is that they have a Velcro closure. So I'm thinking it'll be much easier to get it on Boo or Stella. Um, they also had this one that I thought was cute. Um, it's like a pink leopard's print. I thought that would be nice for Stella. I thought this one would be nice for Boo, maybe even for Simba. Um, they didn't have like a traditional bandana like this one. So this is the one that I got at Christmas Tree Shop. The issue with this one is you have to knot it. There's no Velcro on it and it's it's a bit big so you have to kind of fold it uh, over itself. Um, and because there's no Velcro on it, it's harder to get it on the cat. So. Sim is checking everything out right now. So let's let's open one of these and let's see how they work. So this is what it looks like full size. And it does have a little bit of Velcro on each tip. Now if I was good at sewing, I probably could sew Velcro onto the edges of this one, but I don't really sew very good. So um, let's see if we could put this on Simba. I want to put it on his head. Right, you want me to, you want it around your neck? Okay, he likes it better around his neck. See? That's easy. That was very easy to put on Simba. Around his neck. He doesn't mind it around his neck. Aren't you handsome, Simba? And then from there, we could put it up. Oh, he doesn't like it on his ears. Good job, Simba. You did good. You modeled it nicely, okay? Let's see about Boo. Can we put on Boo? Can I smell it? Okay, good. Smelled it. Gonna put a hole in it? <gasps> Boo! Okay, you don't want it? Wow, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to get it from behind. He's biting it. Mm -hmm. Boo, don't bite it. Boo says he doesn't like it. Let's see if Stella will like her. Stella, look what you got. Smell it. Smell it. Nice. Okay. We'll put it around your neck. It is 12.30 p.m. and Simba's under the bed. Can you see him back there? And Stella's under the bed visiting him. And what happened this morning was Simba ate the raw food that I gave him. He ate the Stella and Chewy's raw food, which agrees with his stomach. And then I was cleaning up and I uh, was getting Boo to eat his food. And all of a sudden I turned around and Simba ate what was left over from Stella's food. Now Stella does not like the Stella and Chewy's food. So I gave her some of the instinct raw bites. The last time Simba ate those, he threw up. So when I realized that Simba had finished the raw bites that were on Stella's plate... I was like, all right, I got to keep an eye on him because I got to see how he's going to feel. And he was acting normal for a while, but now he's hanging out under the bed. So now he's not acting normal. This is what he did the last time he had some primal raw nuggets. Those are the ones that he used to throw up also. 
and the last time he had some he hung out under the bed and then he was fine like he didn't throw up or anything i think it gives him like indigestion or something and i did put the um the gut support uh liquid on all their food this morning so um yeah he needs to stay away from that food. He does fine on the Stella and Chewy's food. He does fine on the homemade raw food. He does fine on crunchies. He does fine on canned food. It's just those two brands of raw food are disagreeing with him right now. So that's what's going on here. It's 3.10 p.m. and Simba came out from under the bed. So what happened was Stella was pasturing me for a snack. So I gave her a churu or a part of a churu because I also gave Simba part of a churu. And I just wanted to see if he was interested in it. He was. He moved out of the corner where he was hiding under the bed. And he ate part of it under the bed. Stella ate part of it. And next thing you know, here's Simba. He came out. So it's a good sign. I think... You know, the food didn't agree with him. Maybe he has some indigestion or something from it. But I just have to make sure to keep him away from that food. Um, and then once that food's all gone, I just won't be buying it anymore. I'm just going to stick to the Stella and Chewies because uh, the cats do well with that. Although Stella doesn't really like that food. That's why I gave her the food because she likes the other food better. Do you see what's going on outside? I don't know what's going on, but Sneakers is sneaking around again. He's like all hunched down, sneaking around. I don't know if his name is Sneakers or Clyde, because I was thinking about Sneakers. Oh, he just went off running somewhere. So I was thinking about Sneakers, and then I was thinking of different brands of Sneakers, and I was like, well, Puma are my favorite brand of Sneakers. I was like, maybe I could call him Puma, but I just feel like that's not his name. So then I was like, well, what are some of the names of the different Puma sneakers? And one of their most famous styles is called Clyde. So then I was like, oh, I wonder if the cat's name is Clyde. So I'm still trying on names. It's 4.30 p.m. and we're supposed to get rain soon. So I put a plate of food out under the feeding table. And when I did that, Ziggy was out in the back corner. And there she is now. You see her? So as soon as I came inside, she ran over to the plate to eat, but then I think she got bit by a bug or something. The next thing I knew, she was running back toward the grass, and um, she was like swatting at stuff. So there's a lot of bugs out um, lately. Now she's walking around to the back of the yard. And um, so the food's there. Um, if anyone wants to eat it before it starts raining, um... I've been making phone calls today with regards to getting these cats spayed and neutered and it's way more complicated than it should be. It is like absolutely ridiculous. I've been leaving messages, waiting for callbacks, which I have not been getting, and contacting various services and companies. And it's ridiculous that there's not a quick and easy way to go about having some feral cats spayed and neutered. I could put a trap out tomorrow, potentially trap one of them, but then I would have nowhere to bring them as far as spay and neuter because none of the local practices that I talk to will do something like that. One of the vets that I talked to today was like, well, you know, it'll cost between $500 and $600 for a spay and neuter. Um, if you're not going to go through one of the discount programs. And then she was like naming off all these different programs. And then I look into the programs and all the information is completely out of date. And they're like recommending people to contact vets that I know have been out of business for years. For example, the vet that I took Stella Splash and Simba to back in 2016, 2017, they're completely out of business, but they're still showing up on all these referral lists. So I don't know. It's just a it's just a big mess. It's horrible. So there's Goldie. She came over to eat. I don't know if that name is going to stick to her, but I'm calling her that right now because she kind of reminds me of like a gold coin on her forehead. It's 5.05 p.m. right now, and I went outside to close up the greenhouse a few minutes ago, and it was perfect timing because right now the wind is really starting to pick up, and... Um, yeah, it looks like maybe there's a storm coming. I'm actually going to go outside. I'm going to see if I could go outside and move some of this stuff off the table because I don't want it blowing around. Um, I don't know if it's heavy enough to not blow around. And um, maybe I'll put some more stuff in the garage just to keep it from blowing. 
I just put a bunch of stuff away and I tied up the umbrella. Hopefully that won't fly anywhere. And the plate of food blew, uh, blew over, so I put it under one of the legs. Hopefully that should hold. The other feeding table's been out in all kinds of crazy weather. So um, yeah, hopefully this will just pass quickly. It's 6 p.m. There were four cats outside, so I put a new plate of food together for them. The other one is pretty wet from the rain. And there's Richard. So he was out there with some of the others who all ran away. And then he only ran like halfway back onto the grass. And then he just kind of sat there. He actually blinked at me a few times. And then he came back once I came inside. And there's one of the torties back there. It's 7 p.m. Splashes by the back door. And there's Richard, do you see him? There's Splash, and there's Richard. He's the bravest of the bunch. He's the smallest, and he's the bravest. He's really interested in any of the cats that are inside this door. At least I think that's Richard. Here comes Boo, there's Boo. Boo's not happy. Who sees the cat yet? Yeah, it's Richard. Be nice, everybody. Be nice. He's chasing a bug around the patio. I think tabby cats must be hunters. Simba love chasing bugs. Let's see what happens if I go outside. Hey. Hey. How are you? So there's still dry food on the platters. Look who it is, it's Ziggy. Hey Ziggy. Hello Ziggy. How are you? Where's your friend Richard? Or your brother? Where's your brother Richard? Where is he at? If I walk that way, she's gonna get scared and run, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back inside. It's noticeably cooler out right now. It was pretty hot and humid today, and it's gotten really cool. I wonder what would happen if I went and sat in the greenhouse. So I'm in the greenhouse right now. I just opened the window because there's a fly in here. This greenhouse is made out of pretty thin plastic. So there's not much insulation against sound or um, like temperature. What I'll do once the weather starts getting colder is I'll actually wrap this entire greenhouse in clear plastic. And that helps to insulate it a little bit, but for uh, the summer season um, it's not wrapped at all and uh, on really hot days it got up to over a hundred in here and that's with the door open the window open and uh, there's a little fan in here too so there's Richard he's on the other side of the patio I'm in the greenhouse he's on the patio he's getting more and more comfortable in the patio with me Hey Richard, you look pretty. Okay, you got scared. I'm getting bit up by bugs. It's 7, 10 p.m. I just went outside and put some more raw food on the platter. And then look at this, like, it looks like either three or four cats. I don't know where they came from. They must have came from the back of the yard. I don't know who's eating. I need to fix the, um, the cameras facing the wrong direction out there. It's 7.15 and I just went outside. I gave them the rest of the homemade raw food that I had defrosted for them and a few more handfuls of dry food. And there's five of them outside right now. Oh, and I forgot to move the camera again. 
I forgot to move the camera because when I was putting the food out, um, the one with the white paws, like Charlie or Clyde or Chuck, I haven't figured out his name yet, he like came over to the plates. And I was so like shocked that he wasn't running away. So um, yeah, I'll give them um, some time and then I'll go back out and move that camera. Guys, there's a fox on the patio right now. I don't know where it went. I just checked the security camera. There's a possum on the other side of the patio. Here's a cat. And there was a fox, like literally a minute ago. I don't know where it went. I hope the cats stay safe. So this would be the second time I saw the fox here. I don't know if you could see it, but the, um, the possum is near the patio furniture. So first we heard like a noise, like something was moving around and I thought it was um, I thought it was raccoons trying to get into the automatic feeder again. Look at this, this cat's just sitting here. Here's another cat. And there goes a possum in between them. I don't know where the fox went. You guys okay out there? Boo's at the window with me. You guys okay? There it is. I think he was eating some of the, um, he was eating some of the food on the, there's a little bit of food left on the platters. I wish the cats would go away. I hope cats can outrun a fox. You guys see the fox? Get away. They're just looking at me. The other one's just hanging out. I don't want to scare the fox and cause something weird to happen. But I, I, I don't know where it came in. Oh, there's the possum. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. <gasps> I hope the possum's okay. I hope they're not gonna fight over food. So the cat moved over and the po the cat moved over. There's the fox. Come on, cat. Come on, cat. Go away, cat. I don't know if the fox is afraid of the cat or what. It's a little fox. I wonder if it's the same one that was here uh, like a few weeks ago. I don't know anything about fox behavior. This is the first year I've seen them in my yard on my patio. I've never seen them before around here at all. For as long as I've lived here, I've never seen a fox. And now this is twice within a few weeks. I can't believe the cat is just sitting there. Just looking at it. I don't know which cat that is either. Okay. So someone made a noise and the fox ran off. I don't know where it ran. So it ran off to like the side of the house. Oh, that's, is that Ziggy or is that Goldie? Oh, that's Goldie. That's Goldie sitting there. These cats are so brave. So the fox is back. And it's poking around near the feeder and the platters. This is why I don't want to leave food out at night. I'd rather get the cats fed earlier. So it's just trying to eat whatever's left on the platters. It's a really skinny fox. I've never seen foxes this skinny before.
Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.